Watching Gears. Brought to you by LMC Truck. Restore, maintain, customize. You know, one comment that I hear a lot is that there's just no good project cars left out there. All the good stuff is gone. Well, that's not true. You're just looking for the wrong car in the wrong place. Now, what we have here is a 1967 Mercury Cougar spent its whole life in California with the original owner and she only drove it every once in a while. Yeah, it was actually owned by a little old lady from Pasadena, which would explain the robin egg blue color. But this is all good. This car has been in storage for years. It has almost no rust on it. It's never been hacked on, never been butchered on. This is the kind of project that you want to get, but it gets even better. Due to the fact that this is not a more collectible Cougar like an XR7 or a GTE, or a Mustang, or a Camaro, or a Cuda, well, we picked this thing up for cheap, just a few thousand bucks. We drove it in here. It's got factory air conditioning, power steering, power brakes. This thing is loaded. But what we really have is great raw materials at a cheap price to build a vehicle that will absolutely blow those more popular cars away. And that is what we're going to do with it. Okay, the first thing that you need to decide when you're starting a project like a vintage muscle car is what direction are you gonna go with it? Now this is really important because every other decision that you make from here on out stems from what you decide here. So take your time. For example, a car like this could easily be restored back to original condition and it'd be cool. Or you could do some sort of wild, crazy custom thing with it. I'm sure you can guess which way we're gonna go. But no matter what you do, the first thing you gotta do is disassemble the car in such a way that you'll be able to get it back together down the road and not lose any parts. Here's some tricks to help you do that. Once you have the hood out of the way, one of the first things I like to do is get under the car. This allows you easy access to drain all the fluids, get rid of the old exhaust system. Wow, you gotta love Sawzall. And then bolt the drivetrain so it can be removed. Now here are just some of the reasons why it is wise to invest in a project that's got the least amount of rust as possible. Look how solid these frame rails and torque boxes and rockers and floor pans are. Not having to replace these will save you a ton of time and money on a project like this. Okay, when you're disassembling a vehicle, it is very important that you take a lot of pictures before you disassemble the vehicle so you know how it goes back together when you're ready to do that. It's also important that you store and label everything in such a way to where it doesn't just sprout legs and run off. Now remember, any parts off of a vintage vehicle are valuable to somebody. So another good idea is to start a master list of everything you've got. That way you can break it down into what you're gonna keep, what's gonna go to a swap meet, and what you're gonna have to replace. This will help you keep organized and help you lay out your budget. Now, when you are pulling apart a vehicle like this, it's very important that you look the parts over carefully so you know what you got. You almost need to be part detective. For example, this old radiator seemed to be working fine, but if you'll come in here and take a close look at it, you can see there's all kinds of evidence of leaks. So, if you're gonna reuse something like this, you're gonna have to have it repaired. However, if you're gonna upgrade your cooling system like we are, you're not gonna need this. But it's still a good idea to take it down to a swap meet because original restorers and collectors are always interested in something with a factory stamp. Of course, with some parts, it's pretty obvious when they're junk. <laughs> With everything disconnected, it's time to wrestle the engine and tranny out of its 40-year-old resting place.
Hey, welcome back to Gears. If you're just getting here, you have missed a lot because we have rolled in a 40,000 mile original 67 Mercury Cougar and we're blowing it all apart to build a state of the art street machine out of it. <laughs> now, the thing that's different about this sort of project is with a classic car, you don't wanna just tear it all apart and throw it in the trash because it's valuable. So, as you can see, we have a pile going together here of stuff we're gonna keep and stuff that's gonna go to the swap meet. Over there is a pile of total junk and then, of course, this is the engine and transmission that came out of the car. Now, the reason that I wanted to keep this as original and as untouched as possible is that this is a time capsule, man. This is the best reference that there is for somebody that's restoring an original Mustang or Cougar back to original condition. Notice all the tags are in place. The hoses are original with the part numbers and the Ford Motor Company logo on them. All the California smog equipment is untouched. Even the exhaust manifolds and the Y-pipe are original. Now, if you're going to restore your engine back this way, it's really important that you take a lot of pictures and document where every tag, every hose, every marking is on something like this, because this is what the judges look for at concours style car shows. Now, if you're not doing this sort of restoration, none of this makes any difference. But before you just throw something like this away, Remember that an all numbers matching drivetrain out of a 67 Cougar with factory air conditioning, smog pump, power steering all in place is valuable to somebody that is doing this sort of restoration. So putting this on eBay or taking it to a swap meet can help you pay for the project that you're doing. Okay, the next area that we're gonna dig into on this project is the interior. And the only way to know what you've really got is to take it apart. And trust me, you never know what you're gonna find in something like this, especially a car this old. This is great. All right, the first things to come out are the big stuff, like the seats and the console. And as before, this is the perfect time to make a list of the parts that you know you're gonna have to replace. What the heck? I have no idea. You tell me. Moment of truth. Oh, man. Yeah. Here we go. This is where all the good stuff is. Under the back seat. There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, check this out. Come on over here. Look at this. You got a comb. You got a bracelet. You got a fork. You got a bar of soap. You got a business card. We may need to call that number. And you got a coupon for a trial size bag of colossal nuts. <laughs> there you go. All right. Once the seats are out of the way, you better get ready because now it is time to get dirty and nasty. The next thing to come out will be the carpet and the padding underneath it. Once again, don't be surprised what you find here. What's this? It's like you got some sort of letter here. Man, wouldn't that be cool if that was from the original owner? You might find out the history of the car. That'd be cool. Now, when you're checking out surface rust on a floor, you need to be real aggressive and trying to find out just how bad the damage is. Because if you've got holes in the floor, you're going to have to patch it. This is not the time to lie to yourself and pretend you don't have rust. Fortunately, this floor is still really, really solid. Ah, there's one. You got a little hole right there. Little tiny one. Real solid all the way around it. Oh, you have one spot right there. We can deal with that. So the verdict is <laughs> we really lucked out with this car. I mean, we got a couple of small holes in the floor pans to patch, and that is it. So no major reconstructive surgery. That means the next time you see this car, we're gonna start turning it into the fastest cat on the planet.
You know, it's no secret that most gearheads' earliest car experiences involved building models because we all wanted replicas of our favorite cars and trucks. The problem with models, though, they didn't last very long. I mean, you couldn't play with them. You couldn't even hardly touch them. <laughs> they just fall apart on you. But that's what they were. And hopefully, as you grew up, the desire to build something translated into building real vehicles. The problem with real cars, though, is that most of us can only afford one or two. With die cast, you can have a whole bunch. The problem with die cast is there's usually a big difference between the replica and the real thing. Well, at least there used to be a big difference until a company named GMP came along and completely changed the way everybody looks at die cast models. We started as Peach State Motorsports making 64 scale transporters. During that time, we saw an opportunity for the muscle car collectibles. So now we had two different collector populations that we were uh, catering to. And during this period though, we saw opportunities to just add more detail and we always had the philosophy that limited and serialized was two elements that the collectors really liked. So by adding detail, staying limited, and serializing the product, we kind of created this environment of real collectibles that went up in value. The thing that separates a GMP model from everybody else is the incredible attention to detail. You don't just have steering that works and doors and trunks that open, you also have working suspensions, rotating drive shafts, even roll-up windows. After you get done with this and we approve that, we go to uh, production. And then that takes three to four months for a thousand piece run. Now is this factory color? Do you use factory paint? For, for most of the muscle cars, we do use factory options. Wow. Uh, only cars that were actually made. It even has the air cleaner ring. Yes. Foam ring. Yep. And that is the brand new Orbit Orange GTO Judge with uh, sandstone interior. Not only that, but GMP builds models in different scales. And as the size of the models go up, so do the details. Until you get up to the massive real art models that feature such detail in the engines and the suspensions and construction that you would swear you could actually drive one of these things if you could somehow fit inside of it. The big scale is a guy thing, I guess. You know, where these are nice die cast replicas, we feel the big scale, the real art replica, is more pieces of art like you'd see mm -hmm. in a museum. Uh, plus, we had really developed the resin capabilities, which used to be difficult as far as stability, but now we've got the formulas where we can make an accurate model and do lower quantities. Another thing that makes GMP so unique is what they make replicas out of. I mean, of course they do hot rods and muscle cars. They also do vintage race cars, sprint cars, even shop tools and other unique things. You want a replica of your favorite guitar? Check these out. The attention to detail is so realistic, you'll swear you can hit some licks on one of these things. We're always growing. If we stop growing and stop looking for new avenues, then that's when we're done. We are, we're licensed with uh, Ferrari, with Mopar, uh, Chevrolet, GM, and we're taking these uh, to global, new places. We're in 62 countries right now, as where uh, five years ago we were only in about 24. However, one of the best things is that they are always looking for the next replica to build. And with the Rat Roaster slated to become a GMP model, we were able to get some insight on what it takes to bring a real car to life as a die cast model. We'll take some now. We'll probably need some more as the car progresses, especially when the color gets on it and what have you. But uh, we'll take some pictures while we're here, and that's what we do. We have a blower ready to go. Okay. If uh, the you're... blower, the blower. <laughs> <laughs> you know what movie yeah, that is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're just happy to be part of this. We really are, and I look forward to maybe making models of cars you build here. Now hopefully this gives you an idea of what is involved in creating a collectible die cast model. It's almost as involved as building the real thing. But keep in mind that all die cast is not created equal. Some are toys that are meant to be played with. Others are true works of art that you can afford to own and they're still tough enough to be played with. 
That's something you cannot do with a baseball card collection. Now, quick tip. Brought to you by E3 Spark Plugs. Born to burn. You know, one of the things that you're going to find when you are building or restoring a vehicle is that you are going to end up with a lot of small parts that need to be painted on both sides. Now, what a lot of people do is lay down a piece of cardboard and spray paint the parts. The problem is this allows a lot of trash to blow into the paint, and it doesn't really help you when you need to paint the other side. You're going to mess up the paint on one side or the other. So a guy usually will hold on to the part and try to paint it that way. And they paint their fingers, and you still end up with fingerprints in the paint. Well, fortunately, there is a solution to this problem, and it's as close as your local hardware store. Now, these are metal plant hangers. They cost about two bucks. And as you can see, they have metal wires that hang out of them, and they're perfect for hanging your parts. Now, the cool thing is, you can hang a lot of small parts with these, or they're strong enough to actually hold some pretty heavy brackets. Now, once you have everything hung up, all you have to do is go over to your rack, and you're ready to go. Now, as you can see, you've got all kinds of nice access on both sides of the parts. So, no more ugly parts, no more painted fingers. If you'd like to learn some more tips that will help you restore your vehicle, check out the tips page on the website. Parts Bin, brought to you by Cherry Bomb. Disturbing the peace since 1968. You know, two of the most important things that you can do when you are putting an engine together is number one, you got to keep it clean. Number two, you got to keep it well lubricated because what you do now for lubrication is going to determine how much protection you've got when you start that engine the first time. So don't take any chances. Royal Purple's got this stuff called Max Tough and it is a synthetic assembly lube which is specifically designed to protect that engine the first time you start it up. Now it does it with a special formulation that actually bonds to the metal and gives you a load bearing film between the metal pieces, which is exactly what you need when you first start that engine up and you go to break it in. Now you've spent a lot of time and money on your engine, make sure you protect it in royal purple. Once you have your engine built, most people would like to hear it run, see if it's going to leak before they put it in their project. Well, now that is possible if you go to PRW and pick up one of these engine run-in stands. Now this is an incredible piece of equipment. You got to check this thing out. As you can see, it is completely self-contained. It's got the fuel system here, got the place for the battery. If you roll over this way, you see you have adjustable motor mounts that telescope up and down, move back and forth, so you can literally fit any engine in here. Then you have a complete cooling system with the fan, the radiator. Then you've got the gauges and controls here so you can see what's going on with your engine. Now, another cool thing is that this is not just a run-in stand. You can actually use it as an engine stand. Got a rotating head here. You can build the engine here, rotate it upside down, assemble the engine, and then just put it on the motor mounts and fire it up. Now, the last cool thing about this is it is completely collapsible for easy storage. So if you do anything with engines, you have got to go to PRW and pick up one of these engine stands. It will be the best investment you'll ever make. Have you ever been to a car show checking out the cars and seen all kinds of cool trim pieces and lights and switches and wondered where people got that stuff? Well, they've probably been doing some shopping at Watson Streetworks, case in point. Watson's has headlight switches. They've got ignition switches and, of course, all the trim pieces to make those look good. Got some ugly wiring coming through the firewall? Cover it with this. Got some ugly pedals coming through the floor? Cover it with this and finish it off with that. If you're into wiring, they've got lights, they've got switches, they've got relays, they've got everything you're going to need to make it right. If you've ever wondered where the pros get all that cool stuff that really makes a difference in their projects, now you know the secret. Watson Street Works. What are you working on? Brought to you by Miller Electric, the leading manufacturer of arc welding and cutting equipment for your business or home shop. Today's What Are You Working On comes from Ron Poyer, and he's got two vehicles. Now check them out here. He's got a 49 Chevy pickup, 
and he has that thing in the foreground. Now the 49 Chevy, his wife drives, the thing in the foreground, she won't touch, she doesn't like it. But that's okay, because it's Ron's truck, he built it, and here's what it is. He started out with a 46 Ford pickup truck, and he chopped the top five and a half inches and channeled it four inches to get it down on the ground. Now the hood, take a look at this, it's a 37 GMC, the grill shell is hand fabricated and so is the bed. So he's done some really nice metal work on this thing. Now the engine, take a look at this. It's a 355 small block Chevy. Got the tunnel ram on it, got the side pipes. This thing's got all the attitude that it should have. Now if you'll take a look inside the interior, you see that attitude continues. He's got a grenade on his shifter. He's got a real four speed in this thing. So Ron is actually driving himself a real hot rod here. Now he says it only weighs about 2,200 pounds. It goes like stink and it's more fun than a high school date, which is probably why his wife doesn't like it. <laughs> You're caught, Ron. Now this is a a great example of a family that's really having fun with their cars. Here's a shot of Ron taking home the goods at the local car show. Now look at that smile on his face. You can tell this guy is a nut. So Ron, to help you out with your next project and to smooth things over with your wife, we are going to give you one of these self-darkening helmets from Miller Electric. It looks like you'd be able to get some good use out of that. Now the rest of you guys, if you've got some sort of project you're working on, we don't care what kind of shape it's in, send some stuff to StacyDavid.com. We'll do our best to get it on the air. Now obviously I got a lot of cleanup to do on the Cougar. That means it is time for you to get out there and start working on something. We'll see you next week.